so I have this uh, 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 name uh, s- separated by some uh, some dots at DTX, yes. uh, and and that lives with me, and I use it for everything, right? Uh, or do is, I have multiple? Yes, that is the. It's it's like in the real world. It's only one you. When you talk to Wells Fargo Bank, you have a different context. When you go to Stanford facility, medical facility, you have a different context, but it is same you. Okay. You don't go to Stanford and say, give me money. You don't go to Wells Fargo and tell me, give me vaccine. Right. So, and, and so this identifier is something that, uh, how does that relate to my uh, social security number, my driver's license number, things like that? So when we try to create your digital, the cryptographic representation of you initially, we use that information and then do a single one-way hash. We don't keep any of your personal information. We don't want to know you. We want to actually create a cryptographic representation of you. Mm-hmm. And that cryptographic representation of you can be created by the trusted sources that you already know who you are. Your mm-hmm. company that you are working for you for you are working for knows who you are. Otherwise, they won't put mm-hmm. you on the payroll. Yes. The student, if you are a student, the university that you are going to regularly, they know who you are. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they won't enroll you. So they have enough information about you. Your bank has information about you. Your uh, um, um, medical facilities and your physician, all these people know who exactly you are. Your driver's DMV knows who you are. The sources where they know who you are, any one of them will be able to bootstrap and create that digital representation of you. Okay. That is created from your attribute that only can be attrib- created for you. That can't be created for me. Once that is created, it gets delivered to you. When it gets delivered to you, you bind it with your FIDO to the backend service. That way, there will be human binding. It is not only created by right set of people, right set of way. It is delivered to you in right set of way through a trusted channel, then you enroll yourself with that key. This is my birth. It's almost like when you are born, you have the birth certificate. You go to elementary school and show that birth certificate and say, create an elementary school identity for me. It's exactly the same. Your your cryptographic representation is created. You bind it and you become part of this ADA citizenship. Once you become part of ADA ecosystem, you use that cryptographic representation and say, this is my. This is me. Give me my employee credential. Give me my student credential. Give me my student diploma. Give me my bank account. Give me my, you know, everything that belongs to you, driver's license, passport, now can be delivered to that particular cryptographic representation. So we've got sort of in, in our data model, we've got users that have uh, ident- citizens that have identities. Um, and then we have these trusted providers of identity, the DV- DMV, the, uh, uh, the passport authorities, your employer. What, what, how would you describe them in your data model? What's the buzzword that you use to describe we, them? We call them trusted issuers. Trusted issuers. Okay. And uh, um, the people who want to verify them, we call service providers. And in some cases, your issuer may also be a service provider. Yes. So the service provider might be an online store or someone that wants to know who you are, presumably. Yes. It's so, like, uh, let's say you are going to, you just moved into this country, you want to create an account with Amazon. Yes. Today, you can put any name and create anything that you want. If Amazon yes. wants to be good, they want to know about you as a vendor who is selling stuff on Amazon. Mm-hmm. They can say, can prove that you are actually Steve. Yeah. When you say, then they say, prove that you are actually Steve, then you can say, here is my driver's license, go check it. Yes. So how does this world look different? Uh, fast forward, uh, and you've got as far with ADI as you uh, have with FIDO. What does that process look like where someone, say someone is uh, trying to steal my identity on Amazon, I have this... Uh, a digital identity, and they're trying to impersonate me and buy a whole bunch of stuff uh, using my identity or, or to apply for a credit card or something, use my identity. How do you stop that bad stuff happening in this new paradigm? So 
there is always a other side of the story who is actually providing the service. Let's say I'm trying to create an account for you using your names. Mm -hmm. In this ecosystem, when I go to Amazon or when I go to Chase Bank to apply for a credit card, assuming that they all embrace ADI, if I put Steve Stapp I in mean, your name and then your social security mm -hmm. number, somehow I was able to catch all of that. When they put it, the register button or apply button, before that, there will be one more button which is called prove you are Steve. Mm -hmm. When you say prove you are Steve, you have to talk to and say, here is my credential, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anytime and every time something somebody claims that comes to your interchange or your cryptographic key, there gets a notification for you. Hey, somebody is trying to access this information. Do you approve that? Mm -hmm. So as long as that key they are using, the notification comes to you. If Ramesh is trying to steal your stuff, you get a notification on your phone. You are applying for a Chase Bank account. Would you like to approve it? And then you'll mm -hmm. say, I, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. I never applied. You hit the no button, the thing will be done. Okay. So there so is always is... any time, any time anybody who uses anything in this ecosystem, you always get a notification saying, somebody is trying to do this, would you approve it? That makes sense. So I, I, I get a way of uh, being notified every time someone's claims that they are me. And so that way I can de defeat uh, identity theft. Um, what are the, you know, what are the options? Uh, what does this look like from a service provider's perspective? I mean, they, uh, you have uh, people like uh, uh, Amazon and Facebook, and uh, they probably want to be the source of identity that we all use. Is that, uh, uh, are they essentially the competition for what you're doing? Actually, every one of them wanted to be a, want to be an identity provider. But the problem yeah. is you have to create an ecosystem where the consumer wants the identity, not these entities and big corporations. The, um, and they have to have right kind of security and privacy models and that you consumer is comfortable with. Mm -hmm. You know... I wouldn't be comfortable using login with Facebook for my free help. Wells Fargo will never be, I mean, sorry for using specific names. A financial institution will never be comfortable using a social network's login with social network. Not going to happen. Right. You know. And probably me as a user, I um, may have a few concerns about giving Facebook or even more information about what I, uh, what I do. So yeah. uh, I can see why I would want a... Uh, disinterested party uh, that, uh, that is this, the, the way of proving my identity. That makes sense. Yeah, the thing is, for if, if you want to really do identity correctly, there needs to be interoperability. It cannot be owned by one entity, one network, one company. It has to be a neutral mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. There has to be, like today, a simple chat sessions. A Skype ID cannot talk to a, um, you know, a Google chat ID. A Google chat ID cannot talk to a FaceTime ID. Every one of them is silo. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you, if you are on AT&T and if I am on Verizon, if to need to talk to you, I don't have to be also on the AT&T. I can be on Verizon and I'm able to talk to you. So what is the difference between what we're describing here and single sign-on? There's a lot of uh, players that are competing to be the single sign-on uh, providers. of choice. We are not necessarily in the single sign-on um, uh, kind of a business. Um, this will actually add value to all those single sign-on mechanisms where, mm -hmm. Again, like I was mentioning earlier, those were all account-oriented infrastructure. If, if you were first, that's where FIDO adds a lot of value. If your first mile is compromised, everything else is compromised. Mm -hmm. See, if, if with a single sign-on, if I am able to log into one of my services in an enterprise, if everything else is single sign-on, if first mile is broken, I have access to every 25 other services that are out there. Mm -hmm. And 
the single sign on came into picture because and samls came into picture because the enterprise don't want to ask user each time to put user id password that's convenience and friction inconvenience and friction etc that's what pushed the federations in the samls industry this is where fido comes into picture each time when you want to go to single sign on access on more service you don't have to ask the user to put user id password again anywhere if it is just fido a single gesture will reduce the friction and increase the security that's where fido is extremely effective if you are using an sso or if you are using a federation kind of a model just don't allow the first guy i mean the guy who already crossed the first mile let him not go into your locker and your kitchen and your you know all the other places mm-hmm. when he's going there again if you have security guard asking something in complicated stuff that's user friction people walk away if it is just saying a gesture hi kind of a thing then there won't be any problem see historically mm-hmm. we have added more and more layers to make things more security at the expense of user behavior fido is the first protocol which came back and said i'm going to increase your security and guess what i'm going to make it extremely easy that's right. the first protocol as opposed to the opposite normally more security means uh Uh, incredibly long passwords that change constantly and uh, exactly. all of that stuff which means That's that different. you end up uh, yeah yeah no what we are trying to do is not that we are actually adi is about your identity and your personal data it's not about services it's your personal data it's your identity and you when you go to paris they will ask your passport you drop a passport copy there then fly is to fly to london check into a hotel you will give your cap, cap, copy of passport again there do you know where they are storing if they are storing properly or they are storing safely or they stay sharing how do you know whether they are being careful or not we are spreading our personal information everywhere yesterday i went to a covid test because i'm flying to uh, korea tomorrow on saturday mm-hmm. There are three different sites where they had to give me personal information. One is Santa Clara County where they asked me to book an appointment. After that they drove me to a a testing site where there is a testing facility or testing lab. Again they had to give them all my personal information. And after the test is done it went to a different state database and I had to put my name again there to get my report. So just between yesterday and today I gave my first name, last name, middle name, phone number, and date of birth, four different places. Yeah, so I, 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 so that's a very important point. So in this uh, new uh, approach, then I'm not having to hand out my social security number to so many institutions. I'm, I'm really avoiding that. Just give uh, them the digital that. address. Just give them yeah. the digital address. Thanks for watching this clip from the Mr. Beacon podcast here on YouTube. You can listen to the rest of this episode on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed it, please like and share this video. And be sure to subscribe for more weekly videos. For more information about Williot and IoT Pixels, head on over to williot.com.